This is the week of August 5th to 11th, 2018. Kelly's weekly forecast. Found at karmictools.wordpress.com. So let's jump right in. August 6th brings our first activation, Sun squaring Jupiter. This is a powerful energy, and with that comes the necessity of discernment, because it tends to provoke you to want to get lots of things accomplished, and that's a good thing. However, beware of taking on more than you can actually handle at this time. Having said that now, if you need a little push to get some things done, this is just the energy for you. It carries with it the optimism necessary to allow you to go beyond your norm and stretch in new ways. Sometimes there can be a tendency towards self-righteousness with this energy, but try to make it more self-directed and you will benefit greatly. Walk your talk, embody your truth. However, if you turn it on others, demanding that they believe what you believe, you may have some difficulties. Be open and receptive. Have a don't know or beginner's mind because you never know what you may learn along the way that could really help you now or in the future. Then we have, also on August 6th, Venus enters Libra until September 9th. This is relevant for three reasons. One being that Venus is at home in either Libra or Taurus. Here she's in Libra. And is strengthened by that. And two being that relationship stuff is Venus's domain and Libra's lesson. And three being that Venus is about to go retrograde in Scorpio October 5th. But review the tail end of Libra before it goes direct November 16th, meaning she will be back here again where she is now in August in November 2018. So August is a snapshot of what may come up for review toward the end of the year. Your values and priorities are shifting in relationships and it's best to consciously co-create. So consider the following. Venus, which represents our values, priorities, resources, love, art, beauty, culture. In Libra, which is balance, reciprocity, relationships, is a time to restore balance within your being and develop a new sense of self-worth and self-value. This is an opportunity to renegotiate the terms of your primary relationships and determine what is no longer important to you while preparing to go deeper in Scorpio. If you align your priorities within your own being, as well as your primary relationships of now, then it will make the deep dive into potent Scorpio energy even more productive and less debilitating. When Venus is in Libra, it is time to assess your priorities and reestablish balance with a cool head because it's an air sign. What's fair, just, and worth it for you by your own definition? It's time to take an honest look at how you, your life, and your choices affect those closest to you. And you want to reflect on how effective your choices actually are or have been in attracting your heart's desires. Remember, Libra is the lesson of balance and reciprocity, which must be considered before taking on the Scorpio lesson of karma, power, and creation. Otherwise, you only create more karma and creations to clean up along the way. Venus will always remind you that you are what you attract and you show the universe what you value by what you spend your primary resources on, your time, energy, and money. So use this time and cycle to recalibrate things consciously and look for new ways of relating to initiate. So I will invite you here for our August 7th is our last call in the Venus cycle that is Aries Capricorn theme before she dives into Scorpio next month and we start a whole brand new cycle. So this is a powerful time and I'd love to have you join us Tuesday August 7th at 9 p.m. Eastern. I'm going to have a special guest Jade Wahoo Grigori of shamanic.net. He is an American shaman and a brilliant storyteller and guide and teacher. The theme of our call is going to be the Venus Moon contact in Libra and we are doing our reclamation at the root chakra which was reclaiming what we want to create in form right now that we're anchoring into form as we speak. So before I go on with the forecast I just want to say as Venus enters Libra it does precede the Scorpio retrograde she's about to hit. So this is your heads up that things are going to start getting stirred up in your relationships so there's some really deep, potent energy to be worked with throughout 
the process of any retrograde. But it is kind of special that this year in 2018, Mars and Venus are going backwards in the same year. So we're getting a, a real upgrade in a lot of different ways. So balance in all things, especially our masculine feminine, which is something else Jade is going to guide us through a really brilliant meditation to integrate those within us at this higher level. Because with the eclipse portal and everything else going on, we've all up leveled in ways that we probably can't even really articulate. Which leads me to also August 7th, Uranus retrograde at 2 degrees Taurus. So Uranus will be backwards until January 6th, 2019. This is a once in 84 year occurrence that Uranus enters Taurus. And it still has to retrograde back and forth over the last two degrees of Aries and first two degrees of Taurus in order to complete the crossing borders that we are already f and the whole world will likely feel by spring 2019. Uranus is a collective planet and so affects many people and takes seven to eight years to accomplish its mission in each sign. It will awaken the Taurus department of life now, that house in your chart, and stimulate any of your planets in Taurus Scorpio or Leo Aquarius by default. Also, I'd say here and now is a good time to reflect on the liberating ordeal you just went through over the last eight years as it stimulated your Aries department of life. Once it is truly into Taurus, you can start to reap the benefits and integrate the recent radical shifts that your identity and purpose, which is the Aries department, have been through, and the focus, and thus the lessons and blessings, will now shift to the values and priorities, which is Taurus's domain, that support the newly awakened emergent self and how that works on the ground, in your body, on the earth. I highly recommend Stephen Forrest's Uranus and Taurus article, which can be found on his website, forestastrology.com. And Forrest is spelled with two R's, F as in Frank, O-R-R-E-S-T, astrology.com. And it's on his blog, What Will Uranus and Taurus Bring? It's a very good article and gives you lots of details to consider. So we move on with the forecast for the week August 7th also busy busy day that day preceding our gate of power Venus in the sky is trining Mars retrograde so Venus rules your values and priorities where relationships and finances are concerned your inner sacred feminine who knows innately how to create with nature what to cultivate and nurture to full development while Mars rules your desire nature and your inner sacred masculine which is responsible for maintaining your personal boundaries getting your ideas into the world and negotiating on your own behalf when you are channeling both through you in a balanced way what you create and how you move through the world becomes a beautiful dance or at least a more interesting story the trine is a blessing of ease and grace an easygoing energy that paves the way for balance and reciprocity and encourages independence within the context of your relationships Communication is usually smooth at this time and exchanges can be mutually beneficial. Any relationships started under this influence usually have a good chance at success, whether personal or professional. So I'm just going to note here that both Mercury and Mars are backwards. So my note here is with Mars retrograde, you are more likely to be working on yourself and your current relationships rather than initiating new ones. But with the trine, it should allow some of the renegotiations to go a little smoother if needed. And Mercury's retrograde, hampering communication, Mars retrograde hampers actions. So right now, this trine can be really useful for review, renegotiation, going back over, possibly even, especially in relationships that are already kind of on the rocks or having challenges, to do the self-work to work on what you want, who you are, and what your values and priorities are, and what you would like to renegotiate once the planets go forward in another month or two, and it makes it a little easier. And certainly, if you can wait to renegotiate a relationship, I would let it go until after Venus retrogrades altogether. But right now, this trine on August 7th, it can be useful for anything you might have to do before that time comes. August 8th, Mercury retrograde links up with the Sun. So this is a powerful reboot of the Mercury cycle on the gate of power, another powerful day. This energy will compel you to express yourself on many levels. Communication will be a focus, 
Just make sure that it is received and reciprocated. You will have access to some powerful energy that can and probably will help you make quite an impression on others if you need to. However, help has to be invited and if they are not ready, open and receptive, then conserve your energy. This is a good time to travel if possible. However, if not physically, then mentally and certainly within your own area because you will be able to take in more information per square inch than usual. Pay attention. You may even gain the much deserved recognition from others that you have worked so hard for. Note with Mercury Retro at this time, I would add that this is a behind the scenes process for now. There is an exploration process going on that isn't done yet, so it may be hard to draw conclusions until Mercury is out of Leo and into Virgo, which will help you integrate what you discover now, here in August. So yes, together Mercury and Sun in Leo is illuminating and getting us to work through a process around our self-love and self-worth. So this is the time of year that we get to review this anyway, but when they link up and activate new cycles at the same place in the same time, it is a powerful reboot. So the August 8th lines gate, Leo gate of power, cross quarter. This is the midpoint of whatever you got going six months ago at the February Aquarius gate. Do you remember crossing borders six months or a year ago? Many of you got those readings then and can refer back to them now for new insights. Think nine-month gestational process for the year 2018. You have nurtured and developed something over the last nine months that is about to need some physical space to exist. August-September is all about preserving what is growing strong, solid, useful, and nourishing, while releasing density, weight, and excess to be composted into something more useful in the season to come. It's a time of cleansing and purification, as well as gratitude and celebration, in anticipation of the fall equinox season of harvest. Some call this the pre-harvest because you can get a jump start on assessing the year if you've completed your clearing and releasing process. If not, then this is the final purge in preparation for the harvest season. The final Leo Aquarius eclipses will help this process. The eclipses are considered course correctors, whether you're a little or a lot off course, and they are intensified solar and lunar energies pouring around and through you no matter what your level of consciousness may be. Things will be particularly intense now for all of us, but especially those of you with Leo, Aquarius, and Taurus, Scorpio activated in your chart. Then we have August 9th, Venus in the sky squaring off with Saturn. So this is a powerful activation and does actually facilitate some forward movement even though it's a challenging activation. This energy can make you feel cool and detached with loved ones. It is time to take stock of your relationships and really evaluate the level of balance between giving and receiving. Business or personal, relationships must have a balance of give and take. You may feel more aware of your true independence in life and start re-evaluating the need for certain relationships in your life. I remind you here that you have to do it yourself, but you do not have to do it alone. This energy pushes you to dig for your own fortitude and determination to live according to your own values and priorities, and corrections or adjustments may be necessary and fairly obvious at this time. You may feel lonely, depressed, or disconnected, but it's just the universe forcing you to question or assess your current relationships, how you interact with others, and how you allow them to interact with you. It's good to periodically evaluate even the strongest relationship and check in with the foundation. Don't give in to ego-based fears, focusing on the lack and limitation, or what is not working, but instead build on the strengths inherent in your relationships, personal or professional, and honor the goodness that you've created together, as well as in yourself through the process of relationship itself. This is the best time for intentional solitude, to be alone and reflective because the insights you acquire through this process will help you in a very real way in the near future. Then we have August 11th, the big eclipse day, when Mercury retrograde will be squaring Jupiter for the second of three times. So the first one was July 9th. The second hit, Mercury's backwards, hits Jupiter again August 11th, and then goes forward and hits Jupiter for the third and final time on August 28th. 
So the thing to consider about this is any time planets go back and forth and over the kind of the same place three times over like this, it's a process is the first thing to take note of. And it is going to take a little bit of conscious awareness to navigate successfully anyway. In this case, Mercury is kind of how you think, whereas Jupiter is your consciousness and what you believe. So when they're squaring off, things can get kind of tricky. At the same time, you can grow in your awareness because squares help us grow. They are 90 degree angles, which are actually stabilizers, even though it forces you to up level and step up your game in some kind of way. So this energy challenges you to integrate your smaller vision with the larger vision for your life. On one hand, you can see the big picture in new ways, but on the other hand, you may not be very interested in the details that make it a reality. This is another good one for expanding your consciousness and thinking outside the box, but as the insights come into your conscious awareness, be mindful of the actual steps it will take to make your ideas a reality. This activation is also great for course corrections where your ideas are concerned and will open you up to learning something new or bring in a crucial piece of information. Just keep in mind that you will have to stabilize anything you start and probably have to review some details down the road because of something you overlooked in your enthusiasm for the new truth revealed from within. Note that with Mercury retrograde this one too is in process. So if you do not have to sign any official documents or make any official commitments right now, try to postpone until September, October. Though that will be when Venus is retrograde, so be mindful of the review going on with your relationships and finances. That only happens every 18 months and in Scorpio only every 8 years. That last happened in 2010, so that is your frame of reference if you want to look for a theme that might be repeating or coming back around again. And that's why it's good to know that Venus is warming up in Libra to hit Scorpio and do some deep digging. So there is support. There's a Venus reading and there is an Eclipse portal reading. So I wanted to remind you here as we dive into the Eclipse note that you can get a reading that is either a PDF only or a PDF plus an MP3 or you can get all of that and talk to me directly as well. So be sure to check in with the blog for links to those readings. Do you want to know what area of your life is being affected by 2018's Summer Eclipse series? That is what this reading would focus on. So reach out if you are looking for some guidance or support around the eclipses or the new Venus cycle that is about to kick off in the next month or two. So August 11th, Leo Super New Moon Solar Eclipse number 8 in a series of 9. So we're almost done with this one. We get eclipses twice a year every year. So there's always energy for the change, transformation, and radical shifts that eclipses offer. What changes approximately every two years is the sign energy and thus the lessons and the blessings. We spend a couple of years mastering those lessons, like now, 2017-18, in Leo Aquarius, and there are reverberations from the years 2008 and 09, as well as 1998 to 2000. Also remember that it was one year ago that we had that coast-to-coast -coast eclipse that crossed the U.S., so how has your life changed and evolved since the last round of eclipses blasted through your life this time last year? If the eclipses have altered your course, internal or external, and you have released any rigidness with the Aquarius lunar eclipse of July 27th, then this Leo solar eclipse of August 11th will help initiate the new in a clean, positive, and hopefully fun way. It may be time to lighten up, get creative, and have some fun. Make time and space to dig into anything that is weighing heavily on you and find a new way to express it. This is an annual new moon of the new you. That's what Leo represents. And the eclipse says it's a new you to the tune of 10 or 20 years. We are currently also amidst a Mercury retrograde in Leo, July 25th to August 18th. And the eclipse is on the 11th, right smack in the middle. Which can enhance or extend this period of experimentation with the new on one or many levels. I think it will be good for tweaking creative projects before launching them. If your focus is on self-love and self-worth and how you define that for yourself, it may also allow you some customized opportunities to change your thinking in some way. 
The world is shifting at such a rapid pace that I feel it is more imperative than ever to know your own heart. Many of us have lived our lives guided by survival rather than what is truly in our hearts, and we have discovered, either directly or from observing others, how this can backfire on you. Consider that anything you do, whether for yourself or the world, needs to be heart-centered and rooted in love, which is also Leo's domain, and that which endures ultimately succeeds. I would add here, that which is authentic also succeeds, blossoms beautifully. When we do things with genuine enthusiasm, humble and pure, we can literally inspire, awaken, and uplift others, and that creates a certain magnetism that creates an energetic flow. The purest form of leadership is to lead by example, so deepen your connection to your own heart, share your light without attachment, but simply for the joy of sharing, and that will encourage others to shine their own light. It is contagious. So happy Lion's Gate, may you rise into your courageous emergent self. Deep breath, many blessings. So thanks for listening. This is Kelly M. Beard of karmictools.wordpress.com, and I'm so grateful for your time, energy, and support. Please share this with those you think would resonate, and reach out if and when you need to. Kelly at karmictools.com, or you can reach me through my contact page on the website. The goal of my weekly forecast is to alert you to the energies and activations that we're all experiencing and the possibilities for conscious co-creation as an individual. Awareness of the energies is the first key, but I invite you to take it to the next level by checking out my readings, telecircles, or subscriptions, which are all geared toward individual support that helps you understand your own unique blueprint. My specialty is cycles and patterns, and I love helping people figure out their own within the context of the social and collective rhythm. To some, working with their own cycles and patterns is a completely new and foreign concept, but there are many planetary cycles that coincide with natural life cycles that allow us to co-create in mystical as well as practical ways. I create custom tools that I have tried and tested myself for over 30 years, and I do the work alongside my circle every time. So I hope you will reach out if you feel called to dive deeper into your own soul's natural rhythm. Talk to you soon. Namaste.